Minister, thanks very, very much indeed for, for joining us today to talk about a subject that I know is of enormous interest to you personally, uh, uh, and that's non-formal education and learning. But I wanted to start with your own education and your own background. What were the experiences that you had as a young person yourself? And how did they impact your approach now to the way in which you lead uh, the area of youth empowerment with, within Mauritius? Actually, uh, I, had, I had the chance, you know, to, to follow my primary and secondary education in, uh, in, in public schools, public schools, uh, which laid a lot of emphasis on what we are calling now non-formal education, you know, uh, like uh, sports, uh, leisure, artistic uh, arts, uh, religion also. And this helped me to, uh, to, to become a, a, a good human being. Not only a, a person with a lot of academic certificates, but uh, a, a person with human background, uh, a person with uh, love for, for the others. And um, in, my, in my career also as uh, a, a former teacher, a, a French teacher, I had the opportunity to have a lot of uh, non-formal courses which uh, help me in my in my teaching also. Uh, I think also it, it also becomes from the family, you know. Uh, uh, we here in Mauritius, we are we are very very uh, we have very strong ties with, with the family. We live in extended families with grandfather, grandmother, and uh, we all you know group together for major events like like Christmas, like Easter and, and New Year. Uh, there's always a, a reason to 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 meet the family and to have fun together. So I think this uh, background uh, helped me to 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 become a like you say I'm I'm, I'm a, a champion uh, of of non formal and learning uh, education. Yeah. It's interesting. You, you you speak as a as a former teacher, and and, yeah. and so am I. Do you think that an emphasis in schools on non formal education and learning changes the relationship that exists between a teacher and and the young people in their charge? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let me just give you. One of the many things that I used to do, like uh, when I was a teacher, uh, the, the young ones that, that come to college after their primary uh, schooling, you know, on the very first week, what I always do is not to work at all. Uh, put away all the books, put away all the copy books, put away all the pens, and we go outside. We go outside on the football pitch, and every day we had a special game. Uh, this helped in these young people, they were girls, it was a girls college, these young girls to know each other first. This allowed them to get acquainted with their new environment, uh, the college, and this gave uh, me also the opportunity to observe and to know who they are, what are their, their specific, you know, aptitudes, who are right-handed, who are left-handed, this is important, in the, uh, the, the way they sit in class, this is, I think, very important to know who are left-handed, because they always have the difficulty to live in a right-handed world. So all these things, I've been doing it uh, for, for, for a whole week. And what I did also, uh, I was responsible of the drama club of the college. I was responsible for the drama club. So we stayed twice a week after school hours and uh, we, we trained and we had, you know, uh, uh, plays. We started to prepare plays, giving them drama techniques. And this is a, you know, I, I think these were the most important moments of their life uh, they most enjoyed this 
than the French class. <laughs> so uh, it was really an important moment, you know, for, for, for the students, for the kids. Yeah. How, so so I, that's really interesting. And I, I, as a former drama teacher myself, I I um, ah, I, I, approve, I approve ah. of your interest. So that's that's, that's terrific. <laughs> Where when when you yourself were growing up, one of the things we talk about is young people finding their purpose, their passion, and their place in the world. Can you think of any? particular experiences that you had as a young person that stand out in your mind as those sort of learning milestones when you thought to yourself oh that's that's how the world works uh, i think that you know the the in fact it is the the teacher it is mostly the teacher who who allows this, you know, these wonderful things to happen in the head of, of children. Of course, we are here to deliver academic subjects and, and help them through their, their career, help them through their exams and things like that. But it is really the, the teacher who ignites things in the head of, of young people. And uh, I, I always had a, a, a French teacher. I think the, the passion of, of Teaching French uh, comes from this particular person I'm thinking about. Uh, we use for, in a, in, a, in a class of, you know, 45 minutes, we used to work only five minutes. And the other 40 minutes, it's about talking about life and talking about everything. One day I had the courage to, to ask him, so with all respect, we have a syllabus to, to finish. We have HSC Higher School Cambridge exams that they are coming and French is a major subject. I will, I think I will be doing it in, in, in university, doing it for my career. And unfortunately we are studying only for five minutes in a 45 minute class. And he, he smiled at me, he smiled at me and he said, you know, uh, you know, my young friend, uh, these, these 40 minutes that we are taking, talking about life, talking about all everything, you know, uh, this is the 40 minutes that will allow you to pass your exams. Not the five minute academic course that I will be delivering to you. And uh, I went home and, and, and this, you know, uh, went in my mind for some days and days. I tried to understand how, and, but it was afterwards when I finished school and I got my results, then I realized what he was trying to say. Uh, and I went to meet him and to say, thank you, sir. And because of what you have said and what you have been doing, I think I will follow your, your, your path and I will honor you by becoming a French teacher myself. Uh, these, these are the special moments that young people need you know, so that they can be guided and see, see the world differently, see the world differently, see life differently. Um, and we, we, we use also, you know, because I was uh, following my classes in a, a my studies in a Catholic uh, college and uh, we had uh, catechism classes. And uh, once a year we have a residential a uh, religious retreat where we go for a weekend somewhere far from, from our place of residence, staying with friends and not only reading the Bible, of course, <laughs> or else I would, be, I would have been a, a, a priest, <laughs> but uh, the Bible also, but, you know, take time with friends and the animators who are there uh, and trying to, to, to have, let us uh, see how we are going to, to live our lives and so on. So these are the very special moments that really, really, I think, uh, you know, give the, the young people the moment to, to, to think about, about life, yeah. It's really interesting that you should use the term animateur yeah. because I think that in English, that's quite a difficult concept for people to mm. get their head around. We use, we use terms like mentors, Mm. And of course, we have the term teacher. 
But I don't think we have an equivalent of that French term animateur. And yet, yeah. for me, that's the closest I can think of to the relationship that we have in the award between what we would call award leaders and Absolutely. the young people that work with them. There's that, there's that gentle partnership between the two that is both challenging on behalf of the adult yeah. and yet respecting the interests of the young person in terms of deciding what the actions will be in order to reach the learning intentions yeah. that, that, yeah. that exist. And I wonder now, as, as Minister for Youth Empowerment, where you see the role of people serving that, that, that role of, of, of leader, animateur, facilitator, in terms of helping young people um, uh, find a purpose in their in their their life, and perhaps particularly in terms of community service, where 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 does that fit with your own vision for Mauritius and its young people? Oh, the, these people are the most important one. We really need them, you know, to help us in all the the non formal part of, of education and all the programs and activities that we have at the level of the, the ministry. Uh, first of all, uh, mathematically speaking, the uh, youth offices of the ministry won't be enough to cover the whole Republic of Mauritius. You know? That's uh, the, the mathematical part of it. But secondly, the, the leaders, the animators, they, they, they are from the community of these young people. They live with them. The, the, the animators know these, these young people by, by heart. They know their family, their background, where do they live and what they are doing. And uh, they, are, they are near to these young people, you know. And for, for, for me, for my ministry, for my, my officers, uh, the leaders, the animators, they are the most essential human uh, factor that we need so that these, these programs, you know, can really benefit the, the youngsters. Yeah. And we, we deal a lot with these people. Yeah. It's, it's funny, isn't it? Because I, as, a, as a teacher, I had a particular relationship with the young people in my care but I was also a voluntary youth leader as well. And I yeah. think the two complemented each other very well. I think I was a better teacher because I met the young people outside the classroom. And I totally think I was, I was a better facilitator, a better, yeah. a better leader, because I understood the concept of, of, of learning intentions and helping young people towards particular objectives. Is that what's happening within Mauritius at the moment? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this was my case, and this continues to be to be the case now, where we we have we have uh, a lot of teachers helping us in in the Duke of Edinburgh program. You know, uh, this has been the the very best way for us to democratize the the program, that we bring it to to colleges, and we try to bring the teachers in the in the program. And uh, this really helped us a lot. And, and we, have, we have testimonies of, of these teachers, of these, uh, and we have also, you know, uh, other uh, staff of the colleges that help us also. Not only teachers, we have admin, administrative staff, we have, you know, uh, attendants, we have everybody that in the school that are willing to, to come and, and help us in, in leading the, the, the program. Absolutely, I, I totally agree with you, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. You, you mentioned you mentioned the awards specifically, uh, yeah. uh, and I guess we would say that it's an excellent description of what great not formal education and learning can look like. If if I ask you in your in your position as 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 minister for for youth empowerment specifically, what role do you think non formal education and learning can play? in helping young people to, to be empowered and, and wonderful future citizens? Um, the, the, the thing is that, you know, um, 
when when I was a, a, a kid myself, this non-formal part was being fulfilled by parents and grandparents. It was like that in almost every country around the world. Although this has not disappeared in Mauritius, but it has decreased because of both parents working and not necessarily have enough time to you know, fulfill these, these roles. And then come the school. And the school now has become so competitive and uh, the students, they, they, they lay a lot of emphasis on their studies. There's a lot of competition. They have a lot of work. The syllabus, like we say, is, you know, is, is big and not enough time with lockdowns and so on. Uh, it remains that uh, this non-formal education has to continue. It is most important that this has to continue. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of authorities that can help in that. There are NGOs doing it in Mauritius. My ministry, uh, we have so many programs uh, and activities that will help in this non-formal uh, education. And, um, and it is a fact that we cannot do without non-formal education. This is, this is very clear. We cannot let our young people to have only formal education. Impossible. Because uh, I'm, I'm not uh, saying nothing new because we all know that non-formal education give uh, the, the, the young person all, all the, 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 the tools that, that he needs uh, to face the difficulties of life. And this cannot necessarily be taught in a mathematics class, in a science class, and things like that, you know. So we, we are making a lot of effort at the level of the ministry to uh, maintain uh, all the activities or the programs that forms part of the non-formal uh, education. Yeah. And where does the award sit in that space for the nation of Mauritius? The award is a very important component. Uh, in Mauritius, the, the, the government gives my ministry a budget for all the financial implication concerning Duke of Nibiru Award. And this, uh, you know, makes that the, 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 the award is completely uh, free uh, of cost. Uh, and in that way, we are sending a message to all our, our youngsters to say to them that the award is available to each and everybody of young people of the Republic of Mauritius. And we also, we are also, uh, uh, you know, we have democratized a lot the, 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 the uh, concept of the award uh, by going in every school, in every college, in, in, uh, in going in, uh, contacting so many groups uh, that exist and telling them that they, they, they have the, 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 this project. We have the award policy paper also. We have the award policy paper that defines all the operation of the, the award. And uh, when, when the, the, the gold uh, awardees receive their uh, medals and certificate. This is done at the very highest level of the state, that is at the president's level. And for the other level, like gold, uh, like bronze and silver, I try as, uh, as much as possible to go and deliver the certificates. This is the message that the, the state values a lot the uh, award program, and uh, we support, totally support the, the award program. It, it's wonderful to hear that. And as you know, one of the things that we're looking to do is to amplify that uh, commitment uh, across the Commonwealth uh, at uh, the forthcoming Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. What would be the message that you would want to share with uh, your peers, heads of government as well, around the world, about the importance of non-formal education and learning? 
Uh, maybe maybe we we we've uh, I have you know no lesson to give to 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 anybody, but just like you said to to share to share the the experience of, of Mauritius. Uh, is that we have seen, we have seen the, the, the how do we say, uh, you know, the, the fruits uh, of, of the seeds that we have, uh, you know, sowed in, in, in the soil, if we can take it like that. And we have a, a, a young, uh, we have the young people of, of Mauritius who are, you know, uh, fully equipped, fully equipped uh, so that they can, slowly and gradually start to enter in the in the world of, of of work to become young adults to to eventually uh you know take this country in their hands uh to join the workforce we we have seen it in all our youngsters that are doing the the award and we have uh, several times you know we have we have uh, testimonies coming from them wherever they are in around the world saying that oh uh, thank you they send a letter to Mr. Judah saying thank you for all that they have been learning um, and and last year during during the the lockdown of last year we we ask uh, and we are doing it uh, now also we ask young people all around the, the island to send us small videos saying that what they, they are doing during lockdown and so on. And one young man sent a video saying that uh, because of the award, he has learned how to cook food. And he's being able to, you know, to, to, uh, to deal with because shops were closed. So he, he was able to deal with uh, his daily meal uh, so he knows exactly what to prepare. Uh, and you see, the, what they have been learning during the award is helping them practically in real life. So I think this is the most important message that my friends all around the world should get, that the award allows young people to deal with life, because life is not really easy sometimes, you know. Uh, especially in this uh, period of pandemic, uh, you know, and we really need uh, strength, we really need other things that are what we have learned at school to deal with this situation. And the award gives that. It's all there. I, well, I, as you can imagine, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. This has got to have been the strangest 18 months in our lives, I guess. Uh, but for you and I, sir, um, 18 months is perhaps a blip in our lives. For the young people that we both seek to serve, it's a sizable portion of, of their young lives. Mm. I know that you are extremely committed to the area of mental health uh, and resilience. How do you think the work that we both champion has helped young people to build their resilience and keep them healthy mentally over the last 18 months. Yeah, um, it's, it's true that uh, mental health, mental wellness is, is something very important for, for all human beings, for all human beings. For, for adults, for kids, for youngsters, and uh, having to face the, the, this uh, situation with, with the COVID-19 pandemic uh, all around the world uh, demands a lot uh, on, on our uh, mental capacity, uh, demands a lot on our res resilience, you know. Um, but, I think that that the young young people of, of Mauritius and and I think that young people all around the world that has been uh, doing different activities, uh, be it the award or all the other activities, sports activities, uh, drama, everything. I think that these young people they are really really uh, armed to face the difficult challenges of life. 
I think this doing uh, activities has become a, a culture, has become a culture. And this helps them mentally, uh, morally, uh, and, they are, and they are prepared to, to face the, the difficulties of life. Uh, like I've said, actually, we, we are still asking young people to send us videos. If you have some time, just get on the Facebook page, Minister of Youth Empowerment, and you will see the, a lot of videos that the young people are sending us. And for the moment, most of them, they, they, they are those doing uh, the award. And uh, we can see them active at, at home in, with a small plot of land, growing some vegetables. Others are painting their houses. Others are helping in, in I don't know, uh, in music. Others are, are, are practicing you know, their, their, their music. Uh, the most important thing is that they have something to do. They have something that keeps them you know, busy so that they don't have time to think about all the negativity of being at home and being locked at home. Uh, mental, mental health is, is, is you know, uh, even, though, even though you are facing a very difficult situation, you are strong enough in your head so that you can overcome all, all these, these difficulties. And of course, the, the, the award is the champion in doing that, you know. One of the things that I, I picked up from the uh, from the videos that I have seen, yeah, I, you. and you've already mentioned it, are the number of young people who have used lockdown uh, as a way to find uh, to find opportunities to give service to their local community. Yes, uh, and and that I found to be immensely um, exciting. Now, yeah. the award has always uh, uh, championed volunteering and voluntary service. But I wonder whether the last few months have perhaps helped young people to see where they sit within their communities and their responsibilities towards their communities in a way that perhaps previously they hadn't. I don't know. What, what's your feeling? Um, in fact, you know, we, we, we had the chance of being COVID safe. Uh, we, had, we had the first, the first uh, COVID-19 uh, contamination around March last year. And by end of June, by end of June, we were COVID safe. So all the activities started again. All the activities started again physically and uh, young people were able to go and do everything they have been doing all this time. And I think that the fact that they have been staying at home for three months, they really valued the, the moment when they get back again on the streets. They really valued this moment and they realized that life is important, life is, is, is full of joy and that there, are, there were some people that really needed their help during the lockdown. And they started to go again and, and doing their volunteering all around the island. Um, this year, we went again in a, in a lockdown as uh, from March again, we, and we have extended the lockdown till uh, end of April. But there is a lot of young people in their locality that are going up with the permission and the help of the police uh, helping people in, you know, giving some food packs, for instance, helping young, uh, old people to go and buy the gas cylinder, for example. Uh, others are uh, helping in going for shopping because we, during the lockdown, you can go for shopping on alph alphabetical order. So all the, the old people that cannot walk, that cannot go around, uh, these young people are volunteering, taking the money and going to the supermarket and buying their goods and bringing back to, to, to them. So um, with, with this pandemic uh, situation, the young people of Mauritius has adapted to a new volunteering system. Because in the past, you know, what they were doing mostly for volunteering is in the cases where we had floods and cyclones. Yes. This was the traditional volunteering items that we did. 
after a cyclone, we all get on, go on the streets and clean everything, you know. But now with the pandemic, the, the youngsters have realized that there is a new style, a new type of volunteering that they can do. And they, they have adapted to it. Yeah. I guess we should, we should probably look towards the, uh, <laughs> towards the future now. Um, one of the things that, that I, um, I'm often heard saying is that we're now helping to prepare young people for jobs that have not yet been invented. What are the, what are the skills, the behaviors, the attitudes that you think young people should be developing now alongside their very important academic qualifications? Uh, you know what, what I'm, I'm been thinking, uh, I think that it will be the other way. I think it is, it will be the young people that are going to teach us, the adults, because they are easily adapting to this new situation. They, I, I just look at my, at my young, uh, young, young children at home. I have a daughter of 16 years old and she will be uh, taking her school certificate examination during this period. Uh, and we are all uh, worried at home, mother, grandmother, everybody, that she has to go out with her mask and uh, going and to sit for the exams. Uh, on, on, mon on Monday, she, she had a, a, a art and design paper of eight hours long. <laughs> and everybody at home was doing some prayers. My, my, my mother-in-law said, oh, how she's doing and, and worrying about her. But I can tell you, uh, when I picked her up uh, at around 17 hours, she was full of energy. She, she was joyful. She had a good time doing her art paper and she didn't complain at all. She did not complain at all. So I think that we need to learn, we need to observe and to learn the young people and, and just give them this little push that will guide them and let, go, let them go in the different sectors that they really want. Uh, in, in Mauritius, we, we, we are trying you know, to, to help young people to, to have entrepreneurial skills because we, we think that uh, small and medium businesses might be, you know, an answer to, to the economic crisis we are all face in. Uh, and my ministry and the government at large, we are putting a lot of emphasis on uh, an entrepreneurial skill. And of course, I think that research in, in science and technology uh, are the different future you know, uh, things that sector that young people need to, to, to venture into. And they are, they are good in technology, these young people. You know, young kids of three or four years all know how to use a touch uh, tablet and, and things like that. So they are very good at technology and there's a lot to explore in technology and research. So I think this is a, a broad picture of what we, we, we have here in Mauritius and what we have observed, yeah. We, we talked at the beginning of our conversation about the importance of skills and behaviors and attitudes one learns outside the classroom. Um, and sometimes those are, those are described as soft skills. Uh, I personally, not terribly comfortable with the term soft uh, because I think that, that suggests that they're, they're kind of inconsequential. Yeah. Um, but but the sort, those sorts of skills, are they becoming increasingly important to young people? Uh, yeah, yes, but you know, my 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 thought is is that they 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 already possess these skills. They are in the young people. We just need them to. We just they just need our help to help them develop these these kind of, of skills. Um, we, we, we have been learning about multiple intelligences and uh, musical intelligence, spatial intelligence, uh, interpersonal and extrapersonal intelligences. 
Yes, these are the, like we say in commas, the soft skills uh, that these young people really, really need. Uh, but they have it, they have them, they have these skills. We are here with our different programs, with our animators, mentors. We are here to, to help them develop these skills. Yeah. And uh, of course, together with the academic skills, uh, they can do marvelous things. I can't think of a better way to complete our conversation. You know, we are in the, we're in the, we're in the job of helping young people do marvelous things with their lives. Absolutely. I think you, you, you've, you've put it so well, Minister. Thank you for your time today. Um, and thank, uh, thank you for, you. thank you for the commitment that you provide and the leadership that you provide uh, for, for, for young people. That championing is so important.